Hi, today I want to check out the setup that uh, Simon and I usually use to record drums in the uh, videos where we have a, a complete backing track for the amp and guitar demonstrations. Uh, the purpose of this video is also to get uh, feedback from you. Uh, but we're, we're not, uh, we're, we're kind of guessing a lot when it, when it comes to drums. We're, we're not that experienced in that area. Uh, but we do think that, that we have uh, managed to record a couple of, uh, of drum uh, rhythms that are, that are really good. Uh, I'm going to show you those in the, in the beginning of the clip. Uh, that's a combination of luck and, and uh, <laughs> extreme trial and error. Uh, so, so today we're going to record drums with a similar setup as the one that we usually use. Um, and we're going to vary the mic positioning. Uh, on each of the five mics we use. It's usually one for, or it is, uh, two mics for the snare, one on top and one under. It's uh, one on the kick and it's two room mics. One that kind of picks up the most, most of the uh, uh, bass, bass drum and the entire kit and one that, that's supposed to, to pick up uh, the, uh, the, uh, the hi-hat. Now this video wasn't supposed to be released. It was just supposed to be a an investigation that Simon and I did just just to uh, learn more about drums uh, because we want to we want to may, uh, put mics on, on the drums and have it set up like that constantly so it will be easy to record uh, but then that way we, we need to know what we're doing so it would be highly appreciated if you could uh, help us with your advice what uh, if you see something that we're doing here you think is uh, could be done uh, in another way with better results. Don't don't be afraid to uh, to point it out. All right, let's let's check out the the video. We're starting first with the with the two uh, of what we consider uh, for for ourselves the, the the benchmark sounds, and then after that we're gonna play the the setup that we have uh, have we, uh, have uh, worked with today, and and then after that we're gonna vary. Uh, the mic position for each instrument and make comments as we go along. All right, let's go. This is early 70s, uh, Ludwig Classic Maple, 26 times 14 uh, kick. Uh, it's uh, three ply, uh, great kick. Uh, it's got the uh, Remo Ambassador Smooth White front skin, and the battery skin is is uh, Ambassador Coated. Uh, let's let's see about how, how Simon has set it up. That's the front skin. Right. We're using a uh, Sennheiser MD421 U5 from I think the 1980s or something like that on the uh, on the uh, kick. It's, it's not the uh, ideal mic for this purpose, but certainly good enough. So my takeaway here is that the, the further away from the drum you place the kick mic, this one, the more balanced tone you get, but the, obviously the more leakage you get as well. Uh, and this is a really big kick drum, so, so the uh, wavelength is pretty long and you want to mic it where it's up, not down, in a node, not a trough, I think it's called. Uh, so, so, so it's important that you uh, really, really uh, 
investigate that. Um, I, I prefer to have it uh, all the way up to the drum, although that's not the perfect drum sound. Uh, and just use that to uh, complement this mic instead, the room mic, which I kind of aim so, so it uh, hits uh, the kick drum, so you get a lot of the uh, front skin sound uh, there. Then another important thing for the sound is how you play it. I mean, either you could get it and then just uh, keep the keep the uh, the batter on on the skin, which dampens it. Uh, another way would be to, to hit it and then just release it, and then you get much more of of the ringing tone, which usually is more desirable. Then, uh, then obviously the uh, how hard you hit it. Again, if you don't hit it that hard, it's more of more tone. And if you hit it very hard, it's much more transient. And uh, when uh, when either of those or th th these many combinations of tones uh, sounds good, depends on what you what you're doing on the other drums, of course. Then we have the snare. It's a 1950s WFL Ludwig, or even earlier. I'm not sure. Um, it's got the uh, Remo Weather King Ambassador batter skin, and yeah, and the uh, treble skin is let's see here Weather King Ambassador also uh, <coughs> tuning. <coughs> possible to hear. Using an EV, Electro Voice, or a 10 this is a classic harmonica mic on, on the snare drum, the top of the snare drum, and just an SM57 to pick up the, the treble of the snare drum. Well, since I'm going to have the drums like this, close close to all the other gear, mic'd up at, at all time, I, I want a really simple concept with not as as few lo loose parts as possible. So I was kind of hoping that I could use this uh, and anchor the mic to the to the uh, uh, rim of the snare. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this is uh, way too close for my taste. You need to. Uh, to come up here to get a more balanced sound, and that, that's what, what we heard in the <coughs> in the two uh, examples I showed you first in the clip, which sounded way better than than uh, than this session, at least to me. So I'm going to have to get a, a stand, another loose part and place here. I, I, I was also thinking about get, getting some rod standing up here, having it hang here, but since Simon hits the drum, drums very hard. The entire <coughs> and try setup is going to just move around like this, and it's going to be weird. Here's a 15 inch paste 2002 uh, heavy uh, hi hat. We usually use uh, the medium, same 2002 uh, 15 inch. This has a great sparkle, uh, but, but it's very quiet. So we, we, we're going to try this one in this video. Uh, th these are very loud drums, especially the kick. So, so for Simon to have a balanced sound when he plays, to hear it balanced in the room, I'm going to try this one out, although it doesn't have the same sparkly top end. But I think it comes pretty close. Um, in this position, we usually uh, use uh, an AKG C451E small condenser uh, to really get the uh, treble from the hi-hat to pan that slightly so, so it pops out in the mix. Uh, but in this one we're going to try a meteor mic. This is a 1960s uh, 
Biodynamic M160 Ribbon Mic. When it comes to the room mic that's supposed to pick up the hi-hat, uh, I usually use the uh, C451 uh, and, and I think that uh, works better than uh, this one. It's, it's a bit too dark, I think the M160 and uh, the uh, 451 is, is used on the two examples in the beginning and, and, and this one for this setup. Now let's compare the, uh, the hi-hats, first the uh, heavy. Change to the uh, to the uh, medium weight one instead. When I'm recording with only one mic, I prefer to have it like like this. I think this is a good position to pick up the entire entire kit maybe you have to play a, a little bit adapted to it to to get out because it's a rather bassy uh, setup but, but uh, it sounds really balanced if you if you hit the hit the hi-hat pretty hard on the other hand if you if you rely a lot on this mic as uh, to get uh, a roomy but punchy sound of the of the kit then then, then of course you can Place that one further out to get get a bigger room sound. 